This was the top story in the August 19th morning news. It may have been easy for some to grasp on the broader level, but it required a lot of pieces from the past, ones I described but didn't show during the morning video. We have looked at a considerable number of changes in the upper atmosphere and have seen every reason to blame the Earth's weakening magnetic field for those changes. Polar mesospheric echo enhancement, unusual chorus wave activity, and the persistence of the perturbed ionosphere despite the solar output dropping for over 20 years. Now nobody is disputing the solar and geomagnetic control over the ionosphere or even the chorus wave activity, but the thermosphere temperature at a record low in the observational record is something they claim to be expected as a result of the increased CO2. Even while they say it warms the surface, they say it cools up above, and that was the hypothesis given for the polar summer mesospheric echo increase as well. They are triggered by electrified dust and water ice in the upper atmosphere, and they said, well, since CO2 should be making it cooler up there, and we know it is cooler up there, cooler means more ice and therefore more of those echoes. We had countered with the recognition that they were indeed geomagnetically modulated. The Earth's weakening magnetic field should result in more modulation. This is indeed what we were seeing with the persistent ionospheric perturbations. It should also be extra electrifying the dust that's up there, and on top of the extra electrification and the geomagnetic forcing, we do expect there to be a little bit extra dust coming into the solar system right now with the galactic current sheet, which would be lofting into the upper atmosphere. Now, any of those three is a better explanation than a cooler mesosphere, their explanation, especially because going from negative 70 to negative 80 doesn't make much more ice. It's pretty well frozen at that point. And while any of those three options I gave work, they are all likely in play right now. Also, you would not be getting the superior activity, the super bores. It would be a gradual increase with the CO2 mechanism. No, this is the increase in electrodynamics and the expected reactions of the upper atmosphere. And as for those thermospheric temperatures, as we have been chilling of late, but if you are thinking that curve matches the sunspot cycle, boy, you are sharp. That was one of the key issues in the recent top story. The thermosphere temperature is indeed 99% controlled by the sun and geomagnetic conditions. The expected additional CO2 cooling at the thermosphere is not there, and that means three important things. First, it means the sun has much greater control over the upper atmosphere than they thought. Second, it means that the weakening magnetic field is now the vastly superior explanation than CO2, the one given in the literature. And third, the thermospheric temperature forcing of CO2 is supposed to be based on how much it worked the lower atmosphere, the values they put in climate models. And so if it's not so effective up there, what does it say about what CO2 is doing down here? So to summarize, among the upper atmosphere changes due to Earth's weakening magnetic field, this new paper informed us about one of them and added sprinkles of climate science as well. The polar summer mesospheric echoes were already pretty solidly argued for being part of the ongoing magnetic excursion, but now the other side, their CO2 argument, is completely out. In the climate realm, the CO2 that we know for a fact is up there is not having the temperature forcing effect they imagined, and of course, that's because it's not having the temperature forcing effect they imagined down here. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.